Good afternoon, friends from near and far, and welcome to another episode of Trolls Pilots uh, teaching everybody from a distance. Uh, today we are going to um, show you some reaching for the contact stuff, which is uh, uh, well magic mostly, I believe. Uh, but also, no, it's of course it's not magic. But we are going to try and show you how to change uh, the horse from not stretching to the contact until it starts to stretch for the contact. Mm -hmm. We're also going to try and show you two different horses today. Yeah. Some pictures of one, mm -hmm. before and after sort of uh, idea. Mm -hmm. uh, not after everything, but after a bit. <laughs> <laughs> after then, half a year? After yeah. half a year, yes. Yeah. Uh, and the other, the other guy uh, we're going to show throughout uh, one lesson, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, you wanna? Yeah, um, there's um pictures that we're gonna, uh, gonna see is um they are uh, of uh, mandar your ho horse that we bought this summer mm -hmm. and uh, we've uh, we've shown him in a stream this summer and then he was like little on the forehand and very low in his withers and uh, with the nose behind the vertical and stuff like that. But then we told told you about that and we said, uh, now we're going just going to show you the seat, Pele's seat and how you're sitting on the horse. And we said this about the, the withers and uh, he's on the, on, the, on the forehand and stuff like that. We're going to train so that is going to be better. And now Pele has trained and it has become much better and we found that that is a very good illustration for what we're going to show you today how to get from being on the forehand and uh, and behind the vertical and sort of starting to to get the horse a little more on the hindquarters yeah so so the pictures that we're going to see that we're already seeing on the screen Not yet. Well, that we'll soon be seeing on the screen. It's on my screen. I'm just uh, don't uh, don't mind me. Uh, we'll show before and after, mm -hmm. and then the video videos that we will uh, look at afterwards. They will show you how to bring the horse from the one condition to the other condition. Yeah. So that's sort of the idea behind this uh, this uh, stream here today. Yeah, because everyone knows that they, you're supposed to ride the horse on the hindquarters. Yeah, or or carry itself from behind and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But how to do it when the horse insists on staying on the forehand? Because it's not always the rider's fault. You know, that I, I tend to repeat that because it might be the horse that has trouble. And then we need to help the horse, not just say that it's my fault, it's my fault. Yeah, and it might not be just the rider's fault. And uh, if, you look, um, if you look at this uh, picture of Mandarp and Pelle and yep. you can see that he's on the forehand, he's behind the vertical and he's he's sort of tilting yeah, forward. You can see the whole parallelogram is sort of skewered yeah. forwards so the horse is sort of just falling forward mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, at this time he was so such that if I gave him more rain mm -hmm. he would either run faster or he wouldn't change his outline anyway. No. Then and, the, ho the t rain would go slack. Yeah, yeah, and that's because this horse, uh, he, he was uh, just backed a little bit before we got him, so not mm -hmm. ridden, not trained. So not per anybody se. else's fault either. Not no. at all anyone's <laughs> fault. But this was this horse's natural confirmation, like this. Mm -hmm. So this this about natural confirmation is it's an uh, this is one of my. Uh, pet peeves. It's a very important little little thing that can help us start kick this off. Um, it is natural, it was natural for this horse to move like this. Uh, natural, in the way I see it, means the way I've always done it. Your habit. Your habit. So mm -hmm. whenever I come to someone and they ask me to, uh, I come to someone and they have uh, asked me to come and teach. And then I say, what do you want to learn? And then they invariably answer, uh, something about the seat. Because that's what I'm known, I, I'm known for, for doing, helping with the seat. And then I move them around a little bit and I tell them to sit like this and like that. 
And then they say, oh, but it feels so unnatural. And what it means when they say that is that this isn't what I'm normally doing. That's what I get out of it. So natural isn't something that confines you to any given way of moving or being. It is what you're normally used to doing. And this horse, for him, it's natural to do this. Despite, as you can see, my best efforts at sitting upright, moving through the hips. Mm -hmm. I, I really tried my best in this image. Yeah. And also you can see that your legs are a little uh, to the front. And that bit. is because he's sort of, when he moves like that, he's sort of kicking your legs away from him. Yeah. And that um, is not contact. No. Mm. You can also, uh, you can see that I'm carrying quite a lot of weight in my stirrups. Mm -hmm. You can see the leg is sort of bent around the stirrup a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and this isn't a big trot. This is a very small trot. Mm -hmm. And I'm still not able to keep my legs in the correct position. Mm -hmm. And you're strong. Uh, it's, it's not the strength that is lacking. No. That is for sure. There's something else probably. But the idea is that the horse's movement creates this tendency in my legs to scoot forward a little bit. Mm -hmm. We will not, um, I'm not gonna, I'm not saying that I can't also do that fault because if the horse expands his stride, that also happens. Mm. There is a limit to how much I am able to move through the hips without my legs mm. for, falling forward just a little bit. Mm. Right. So what we're saying now is that, that you can, you, even though the, you're, you have small faults in your seat, mm -hmm. you can help the horse to move a little better and then it will be easier for you to sit. Imperfections. I prefer that yeah, you call yeah, it yeah, imperfections. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> Next picture, please. And now we are we have several pictures of the same horse. Yep. Uh, to show you that this is not that we haven't found the worst picture from that time and then the best pictures from now. Uh, this was how this horse moved half a year ago and now he moves differently. Yeah, and it was because he was stiff in that area around the shoulders, so he was not able to lift his his trunk or mm -hmm. his chest out up uh, between the shoulder blades. Mm -hmm. You can see that the whole whole chest is sort of sunken down between the, the shoulder blades and unblocked there. I always get this feeling that the whole horse looks like it's falling down into a hole just <laughs> in front, just in front of my seat or in the front part of my thighs or something like that. It looks like the whole horse just implodes into that. And you can see it looks like the, the hind legs are a little higher up. Oh yeah. But it isn't. If you look at the... Look at the, <laughs> the ground is ground, flat. The actually. ground is actually flat. Yeah. On the forehand. Mm -hmm. Right. Next yeah, image, next please. Oh, it's more of... The, this is slightly better. Yeah, because you're actually trying to help the horse to balance. I was. Yeah. All the time. So so this is the best one, I think. And, but you can still see that his, uh, his nose is behind the vertical and he's, he's not quite up in the withers. But, but you then, can see it's better because you can see me smiling, right? <laughs> yes. And the leg is more correct. The leg is better. Yep. Yeah. Next image, please. Still the same, same sort of thing. Oh, this angers me. I don't want to watch this anymore now. No, but, now but the it's, same it's, problems, you I see? I think you're, we're through with it. That's an hour. Horse is scooting sand forwards. It's just... Oh. Yeah. So let's see uh, the let's next see one. Let's see the next one. So this is now. That's the same horse. Yeah. So it's better. Uh, the, the back is still a little low and uh, here. And uh, his, I think he's opening his mouth a bit. But that is yep. because he's still stiff there. Yep. So when the horse is opening his mouth... Uh, it's not necessarily because the, uh, the, the rider pulls. It's because there is something uh, in his jaw, in his neck, in his shoulder, in his back that is too stiff that he, he is unable to like, do things with unable his neck to, without, yes. without opening his mouth. Yeah. Okay. Doesn't mean that the, the rider never pulls when the horse is no, opening no. his mouth. No, no, right? of course. Mm -hmm. Cool. Next again, please. If there's any next. Here we go. Nose even a little bit more forward. Yeah. And the horse is moving in a massively larger stride than it was in the... Yeah, and it's also more parallel, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And you can see that it's more lighter on the forehand. It's lighter still on the forehand a bit. Yeah, it's still on the for forehand, yeah. 
but you can see that it's more it, it's the weight has sort of shifted yep. and this uh, we we're talking about this uh, it's uh, many times it's very difficult to people for people to understand how the horse is actually transferring transferring weight from the forehand to the hindquarters because yeah. the rider is sitting there at the same in the same place mm -hmm. and the, the hind legs are not actually under the the rider no but the the movement is going forwards yeah and that it, what what uh, you actually do here is that the horse is putting his hind leg under and the 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 power goes through the top line up to the back and lifting the back a little up for each stride so that the the withers are lift, lifted that means that the whole trunk is lifted mm -hmm. right so things you can look for it's uh, you can see the horse doesn't look like it's imploding into that hole at where the front of my thighs are. Doesn't look like everything is falling into there anymore. Mm -hmm. Much more coming up that way. Mm -hmm. A little bit more than sort of the butt under and also the hind legs are gripping further forward. But also the front leg is pushing more backwards. Mm -hmm. that, that's not something that we want to happen. I think yeah. that on this, uh, in this particular image, I, th I think that the horse wasn't moving uh, straight. No. So I was <laughs> correcting him from side to side a little mm -hmm. bit. I'm not quite sure yeah, because I don't know exactly when the image was taken. But I, I remember having that sensation. Uh, you can also see that the, or I hope we can see that the front leg there sort of is a little, the forward one is a little bit straight. Yeah, I and, agree completely and, with what you say. And all of that means that if we have a little less tension just from where I sit and a little bit forward, mm -hmm. Then I can open up a little bit more with the reins yeah. and the horse will lift even more. And what you're saying there is very, very interesting because, uh, you know, people say that you shouldn't put the saddle too much to the front, no, front because mm -hmm. then it will sort of uh, uh, get in conflict, conflict with the shoulder. Mm -hmm. And this is when the shoulder is getting too far back mm -hmm. so that it gets uh, um, like in yeah. conflict with the saddle. Yeah. So. If you're moving more over the back, the front legs will never get that far back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting too. You can see that the horse has in this image compared to the last image. Could you take it one back, please? Two back. Sorry. One more. I had forgotten. So you can see here that it's a little bit hard to see, but you can see his tail is sort of hanging down. Mm -hmm. Even if his butt is much higher up. Next forward image. Tail is coming out much more, yeah. even if the butt is a lot more under. Mm. That means that the top line is more engaged. Yeah. So because the tail is a part of the, the top line, a part of the spine. Uh, spine. Mm -hmm. So when there's, when there's a lot of push off through the top line, yeah. then the tail comes out a bit. Mm -hmm. And an extreme example is all the Arabic Arabic horses that are bouncing around out there having fun in their in their paddocks mm -hmm. with their tails straight in the air and the nose straight in the air in the other direction. And the back like this. And, yeah. <laughs> Maximum tension through the back. Mm -hmm. Doink, doink looks like a, a, a deer bouncing uh -huh. through the forest Nan sort of. Antelope. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and they, they are designed to be able yep. to take that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this guy, this horse is very heavy. And it wouldn't be very nice for him to bounce around with a back like that. So we're trying to train for something else. Mm. Next image. There we go. Uh, looks to me like the nose is a li mo little bit more forward. Also, much better rounding in the front leg. Yeah. So I was trying here several times to let the horse go forward with impulsion, dare I say mm. it, mm -hmm. to lift himself with his powerful hindquarters. Mm -hmm. And the, the important thing is that is here that we, we're going to show um, later on that the other horse stretching for the contact. Yeah. And that is what you have been doing yeah. this so, last half year. Like I, like I said in the, in the beginning here, we're trying to show now how uh, this horse looked before. Mm -hmm. And this is how he looks now. It's quite a lot of change. He looks big and powerful, mm -hmm. whereas he used to look like he was imploding a bit. The whole horse was sort of disappearing beneath the rider and how the whole horse is sort of, it looks like it's growing up in front of me mm -hmm. in this 
and this photo at least. And you haven't been training much like that. You've been training much like mostly. Stretching. I've been trained what we will be looking at later on. Yeah. So so what we're trying to tell you is that riding like this won't make the horse like this. Mm -hmm. This is very important to understand. It's uh, it's also um, uh, how can we um, how can I uh, say this properly? Uh, in order to become strong, so you can do things, you have to train for that strength in particular. So what we're looking at here is the horse has become more flexible. So that flexible means that one one uh, half of flexible is that you can increase the um, the angles of your joints mm -hmm. into other angles and actually manage to get your arm or leg or whatever into that angle. Like if you're training for the splits, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'm not, but if I'm training for the splits, it's uh, I can't get very far, right? Mm -hmm. But even if I can get to this position, it is not a given that I can actually use a lot of power in that position. Mm -hmm. So we have to do flexibility in, in one way get more flexible so you can access a position yeah. and then when you can access the position you need to train in that new position mm -hmm. to become strong mm -hmm. so what we do is first you have to stretch the horse until it is able to get its back yeah. in this particular case mm -hmm. into a position Without where we contact yes mm -hmm. until we can work the strength in that position yeah. but if you bring the horse up like you saw when i shortened the rein up in the in the earlier photos mm. the horse just collapsed down in his withers and didn't stretch them and, didn't and if have they any don't contact. stretch if it doesn't stretch there mm. he will never get into a position where he can actually become strong in that new position right so that's what we're going to try and show you so this is uh, the half year end result for the, for this particular yeah. horse mm. and, uh, and is, I get, I think are there more of some. these photos i think we have some one more Yeah, the same here. You can see that the 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 angles in the in the hind quarters are are good, and the parallelity is quite good. I think not bad. And um, the the point is here is to, to see that the the these things are uh, consistent through the whole um, step or the, the or the whole step, like mm -hmm. when the whole movement of the horse. It's yeah. just just one moment, and then it's different in another um, in another phase of the of. The you see, moment. the horse is sort of uh, well. There is a slight uphill here, but the whole horse still looks like it's coming up in the wither in the middle part of the horse, mm -hmm. just in front of the rider. Yeah. Instead of just dropping down there. Mm -hmm. So right. So this is this then shows uh, what the horse was like, and uh, then we have seen now what he has become. Mm -hmm. Uh, and in my humble opinion, I've done a good job. Yeah, and you've been very humble. patient uh, doing like a little boring job because all these stretching things can be very repetitive. I'm really good at repetitive work. <laughs> no, <laughs> he isn't. Stop laughing. <laughs> You're good when you. Yeah. Awesome. So can um, we see that? So let's see someone else who isn't patient. <laughs> That was that was yeah. really funny if I have yeah. to say it myself. Everyone's laughing but because Ida knows that she's not very patient, but she is really patient here. She's doing she's been doing great. this is a cold blooded race horse, like harness racing trotter. Um and they that's something that we do in Scandinavia. We're tr we're trotting with cold blooded horses. And these are really quick ones. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And he really wants to Pull his head up and run. Yeah. The uh, best is to tense your back up as much as possible and then just go. And use your under neck and stuff. Yeah, well, like this. Use and whatever just, is strong at the and moment. And the front legs. Yep. So what Ida is doing is letting him understand that if you stretch like this, it's actually really nice. It feels nice. And you can see that he's like, ah, he's, he yeah, but likes you know, it. Yeah, that's obvious. But yeah. what isn't obvious is why, why do we the do this? heck isn't the horse more on the forehand now? <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> yeah, technically the head is still in front of the shoulders. So the weight of the head is the same if it's up or if it's down. But now the horse needs to stretch its back. It needs to lift its back it, or else it's poss impossible to have the horse like that. Or the, the nose like that. And then if, what, why, we, if we study the, study the horse now, mm -hmm. you can see that after a while he needs to, to like um, bend his croup a little down in the, like, like this. His butt underneath. Yeah, butt underneath. And then right. he needs to bend his hind legs. The needs? I don't get that. No, it needs, but he wants to do it. because It happens. It happens because he's stretching and he feels like it's good to stretch like this. It's like whatever happens, happens and couldn't have happened in any <laughs> other way. Because you can see that. And Ida is not forcing him to, to stretch. No, there's little force involved. Because she's they, busy undressing. Yeah. She's <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Can we... I need to see that again. Yeah, and I, I think Can we I? have another one as and well. That's all right. Yeah. I want yeah. to see this again. Yes. And now you have to comment this because I've seen it. All right. That. So what I see is that behind the saddle, the mm -hmm. horse's back is sort of really dropped. Mm -hmm. But there is sort of movement there still, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. That needs and to then I, I know for a fact that when, when the horse hangs his head down for real like that, hangs it in the ligament sort of. Yeah. It sort of pulls open the withers mm -hmm. and tries to, and from the front lifts the rider, which is kind of weird. Mm -hmm. But that is, if this fits with what we've been saying, then that means that there's an area somewhere between that lower, the lumbar back and the withers mm -hmm. that needs to um, uh, unclench. We need to get the, muscle, <laughs> get the muscles to relax in that area. Yeah. Because if he pulls his head up, that area becomes tight. And if the butt isn't already underneath when he does that, then it can never come underneath. Mm -hmm. Because the sequencing is wrong. Yeah. And also, if he, if he holds his head up in the air, he will tense his underneck and then he will start lifting his front legs with his underneck. But, it, yeah. but now he needs to just when he goes like this, he he can only uh, like the front legs are just you know like a pendulum mm -hmm. is moving forwards, really relaxed. Yeah, that is also a thing that needs to be. You need to take away the underneck muscles. Ten, uh, if they're tense, they are an antagonist to the top line, a yeah. direct ant antagonist. Yep. So now when you take what's away what's an the, antagonist? Yeah. You can explain that. You're the expert on... Uh... It's the opposite muscle. Yeah. Sort of. Do I really get to do this? Yes. All right. So this <laughs> is the antagonist to that. <laughs> Yay. All right. He, he got to do it. Sweet. Yeah. The, yeah so, when, no, when, but, when this is tense, you but can't But we've got to watch this. now because yeah. just when she she's undressing, we have to watch that. No. But we can see that. The back doesn't sag as much just for those few last few strides. Yeah. And that's ah, it. You, the horse needs to time see. to find out this. He needs to sort out how to move. Yeah, it's also, but it's, it's the same. If you want to stretch your, your hips into that fam infamous split, mm -hmm. uh, a revolver will only help if you actually pull the trigger. Yeah. Then you will it's, get into yeah. the splits. <laughs> no, shoot me. That's what I would say. Yeah, but you, you, I can't you just can't do force it. Force people to do stuff like that. That's no. very important. So you need to take time. However, if the horse, yeah, you need to move into the new position as far deep into the new position you, as you can, yeah. dip into and you the have end. to do something there. Mm. Not just yeah. hang there passively. Mm -hmm. You can do that too, but that is very advanced training. Mm -hmm. So you have to move into that area. Mm -hmm. All right. Shall we watch a little? Uh, can the, we see the next more Yanda and Ida? Yeah, because uh, he's stretching, and we can see that he's. I can and see he's moving they... his hind legs differently already. Yeah. But that's just a me thing, I think. But you're the expert on the hind legs, so I guess you're correct. And we haven't 
it, she hasn't trained Yandar to go like that. Trick trained him to go like this. No. Nope. She's been working on making him loose and sort of uh, relaxed in yeah. his neck and his shoulders. And then he will start doing this. It's uh, something that the horses like to do because it's nice. It feels nice to stretch. Yeah. It's uh, one of the things we need to understand is that if the horse can't stretch his nose all the way down to mm -hmm. the ground, head hanging perpendicular to the ground, then there is something wrong somewhere. Just like we wrong. saw on Dalton when you, we were talking yeah. about uh, getting to the contact. Yeah. So then he, because he can't do this, yeah. it's impossible for so him. So it's wrong in the sense that uh, the uh, movement patterns aren't trained or enough stiff. yet. Mm. So he's stiff mm. or weak, or it might be many different things. It can be yeah. blockages. It can be Lots of chiropractical things. blockages. Mm. It's all sorts of little things. Mm. It can be, but you have to find out mm -hmm. and you can't find out if you don't let the rain out. No, that's true. You can't, you have to, if you can't find out if the nose can go down there unless you try. Yeah. And here's so, a trick that I need to explain because yeah. I have to explain this at every clinic I give. Have you ever feel, felt that, okay, the horse won't stretch further than this. And then you have like this much extra rain mm -hmm. and the horse won't stretch. And then you give out the rest of the reins and the horse will stretch. Mm -hmm. It's so weird. It's annoying. The horse, the horse knows, knows. How, long, <laughs> how long the rain is yeah. for sure. Yeah. And it's but, so make sure that you really give out everything. Yeah. Uh, well, not if you're going to fall give out, enough. fall off. Give if you, enough. Yeah, but enough. What's that? Give everything and then see. Yeah, you can find out afterwards out. how try much it is. See what the horse does. Mm -hmm. And that was what I was trying to show on the last stream. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the half holds. You. The sort of beginner half holds for the horse. Yes, mm -hmm. and then you give, and you have to give a lot. Yeah. You have to give so much that the horse understands, oh, oh hello, actually, can yeah. I stretch? Yeah. Am I allowed to stretch? Can I? And some horses are like, hey, hey I'll, I'll steal the whole rein. Mm -hmm. And we're like, good boy. And they're like, oh, what? 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 Can I do this? <laughs> so strange. Yeah. Uh, but this is important, that in the beginning, you have to test things like this, mm -hmm. like stretch the horse all the way down, give out all the rain. Or if you do a half halt, you like take a little bit of contact and wait for like, uh, I don't know, a few mm -hmm. seconds or something. And then you give away like half a meter of rain and the horse stretches uh, or not into that half a meter. But then we've all read that uh, it should be impossible to see the half halt. The half halt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you've finished. Yeah. I was just over uh, at uh, the local library. I played chess with a dude that's been been Norwegian champion. He ruffle stumped me in like 29 <laughs> seconds, even if I know how to move all the pieces. Isn't that annoying? Mm. So, so that goes to show the same idea. Yeah. Even if you understand, I know how to move the pieces. I know it's the the point is to win. I know how to win, mm -hmm. but not well enough. You need seems. to practice. Yeah. Need to practice. Yeah. Uh, Same here. I can see a question waving in the background. Please. Uh, Nina Klibana has a question about stretching. Right. Uh, when it comes to stretching, I sometimes find horses kind of stuck in the stretching. They love to stretch and also trying that instead when working in a shorter, not just shorter, not necessarily short frame, but the horse stretches very well with a nose in front and engaged throughout the top line. What might be causing this and how to move out of that so the horse is more willing to work in a stronger form instead of a relaxed form? We're actually going to see that later today. Uh, that Ida actually does exactly that. So, yeah, we're getting so to So, keep watching this space. Mm -hmm. That's the idea. All right. The question is a good one, uh, and it, you can touch on like 10,000 different ideas. Uh, make sure you're not doing anything wrong. Uh, if the horse is stretching in front of the vertical, well, what's in front? Is it a lot in front, or is it just into the... It's, a, it's almost impossible to explain just on the fly yeah. exactly what to... But what is actually, you know, many of these uh, horse, horses that are constantly behind the vert vertical, mm -hmm. Uh, if they stretch like this, that thing will go away. Yeah, this one was in front of. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But uh, the, since you were talking about yeah. behind the vertical. Yeah. But uh, what Nina is saying is actually a, a, a common problem because 
horses love to go like this. They are just, ah, oh, this is so relaxing and get away with the reins because now I'm, uh, because they have this bad um, experience with the reins. So they don't want to, they, they mean, think that the contact means pulling. So, but the half faults that, uh, that I showed with Dalton last time and what Nina and or Ida is uh, going to show us uh, in a later video is going to fix it like uni or, or bilateral half holds it will fix it cool should we run on yeah for a long time so now we're stretching again and i think we're going to, going to see some uh, more, some trotting if i remember correct correctly and if we're not that's coming we're going to see that he's stretching really far down mm -hmm. because he wants to stretch his back And, the, and you see that the, the nose comes to really in front of the vertical, mm -hmm. down there. Isn't that strange? Yeah. Can you see that he's, and then there was something he needed to smell. Yeah, that happens too, of course. <laughs> Especially with stallions all the time. And now I can see that his uh, lumbar back is starting to stretch more. Yep. Because I wanted to show this uh, to see how uh, the horse actually changes when he's mm -hmm. moving like this for a long time. And that is what you've been doing. Mm -hmm. I've been doing, I, it feels like I've been doing this for hours and hours on end. Probably I've was been doing this for like 60, 80 seconds at a time. Was this starting again, <laughs> Eva? Yeah. Yeah. So I think we need to move to the next one because we now we think need to see the Keep rolling. a little more, more other other gates as well. So now we're starting, to, and you can see that when he's starting to try to trot, he will because he's a trotter, so he will he he thinks that oh we need to tense up in our underneck and just uh, and hurry and hurry because we now we trot is a fast. Fast gait. And this, this uh, when he's uh, shaking his head, that is also a sign that he is um, he's Ooh. loosening up. Now the back looks like it's moving sort of longer forward through the back. Yeah, and that is what he, what happened oh. when he was shaking. Oh, and now you can see that he he's, he wants to run, but he's shaking his head, and he wants to stretch. And he sort of falls over into canter or gallop or whatever because yeah. he's, yeah. And Ida tries to the best of her abilities to free his back up and allow him to move even if this isn't very easy because the rhythm here is all over the place and it's yeah. really difficult to not interfere with the horse. But that's what she's trying to do, she's right? She's trying to get out of the horse's way. But influence yeah. in small ways, mm -hmm. like with small hall, half holds, you can see that she's doing that and she's giving... You see? Yeah, there you go. And this is this uh, is going up and down because this is not a level arena. It's no. in our field. We have made a, an ice skating rink in uh, in our uh, regular arena, mm -hmm. not on purpose. So there, the half holds are there, and then she lets go and she tries again, and there's always. A... You see that he's trying to stretch. Sometimes. And he was stretching and then it became a little more heavy, like mm -hmm. it was, he was straining. And then he fell over to trot and she lets him. Yeah, and now the back looks better. Yes, and, she, and he, now weird. she's doing the same, like with half holes on both reins. And then he's stretching again. And he's, now he's trying to stretch into the contact. Even though he's, he's very far down with his ne nose. Yeah. She's sort of picking him up in a way while he's still stretching. Can you see that? No. Now he's into the contact. That's not too bad. And then he lost the rhythm again. Yeah. And then it, it's all about letting the horse find the rhythm and then he loses it. And, and then you want to help him find it back again. 
So when he, he was cantering and he was all over the place because he has been, he has had a lot of trouble with like um, four beat canter and stuff. And this is a very good medicine for taking away the four beat canter. Um, it's interesting, I think, in, in, to, to me, it's interesting to think about uh, what the rider is trying to do here. Just keep rolling. That's all right. If I understand this, all of this correctly, then the idea for the rider at this moment, in this mm -hmm. stage of the horse's training, to get out of his way, sort of, to balance mm -hmm. herself yeah. without trying to change the horse's balance. Mm -hmm. And this has always been, so this is sort of the, uh, the, cru the crux for mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. Because I want to change how the horse balances yep. with my aids now, mm -hmm. and I am able to, <laughs> which yes. means that it. So that makes it very difficult to not interfere with the horse's movements. So it's not that I'm not able to interfere with the horse's movements, but it is that I am actually able to. That makes it difficult. Yeah. So I have to allow myself to just try and balance and sort of float without interfering with the horse's movements. Mm -hmm. And Ida is very good at this. She, she just lets him go. She's a she's an inventor. You have to be a little yeah. bit crazy <laughs> to just allow the horse to move like this, barefoot in the snow and downhill. Yeah, but it's it's and because you do that, the horse will balance. Mm -hmm. So and sometimes stretching sometimes even he tries to stretch good, and sometimes he keeps his head up and looks like he's sort of imploding into that hole just in front of the rider's seat as we've. Yeah, we talked about with that. Or and that other now he's horse. stretching because she's giving. Yeah. And because he's she, he is still a little stiff here and oh, also yeah. very strong. Yeah. He's strong in his because he has actually been a racehorse. Oh yeah. He's, yeah. There's no. There's not much and wrong with his strength she's or condition. And half halt again and giving because the giving is the the most important part of the half halt. You can see that he was. He was he's there for trying a to, to take the contact, mm -hmm. but it's difficult because he needs to both be loose and like this. Yeah, they look like there the whole, the the back comes up yeah. and the withers come up and the rhythm changed from being all over the place like yeah. this and it, yeah. you can't even see and the legs boom, 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 and it went boom, boom. to just a slow steady rhythm for a yeah. while. There, something like there this comes the, yeah. And then he almost stayed in that rhythm in the downhill. <laughs> and he lost not the balance bad, again. Not bad. But you need to, but just continue doing it until he, and, and the good steps will become more and more and more and more often. Yeah. And then suddenly one day he is dead, uh, like the um, rhythmic. Yeah. So after a while. Up. When you, when you do this, something else becomes natural. Yes, because the habit will change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And all the time, let the horse down, uh, finding the rhythm. And, and when you try to get the contact, as, uh, as Nina was asking, um, the horse will do this. And mm -hmm. I think we have got uh, a video of that as well. All right. Yeah. yeah. Shall we try the next one? Yeah, just like this. Yeah. This is this what was... he does when he wants to run. Yeah, this is As a... we have always. Yes. Everyone has experienced this. So and this give. is a half halt in the beginning. Yeah. Half halt and give. You can this see is now what the he's half... to the contact in a short, for, uh, short outline. This is what that? the half halt looks like if you're not the Norwegian champion. Blitz chess champion. Yeah. You can see, and this is. All these uh, videos have been taken on the same day, and is even better in the in the sort of the part of the back just behind the saddle yeah. becomes better and better, and also it looks like the hind legs come more under. Yeah, and that's interesting because her legs are still in the a little bit too much forward. 
place yeah, and she's most of the time. Posting to the trot, so her yeah. seat is not that active. Or so she's just content. allowing him to find his balance, and yeah. he brings his hind legs in to balance himself a bit better. Yeah, which is what the whole training scales is all about. Yeah, and you can see it's easy to see her half holds and her giving forwards all the time, and the nose is no coming good. more and more in front of the vertical. And sometimes he loses his balance and then he, he gets very hurried. Mm -hmm. But that's because he's, <laughs> he's trying to use his front legs for like shuffling along. As you can actually see now on him how he, how he has changed from looking uh, somewhat like Mandarb, the other horse, mm -hmm. looked like in the beginning, to somewhat what he looked like in the after images. Yeah, yeah. Somewhat. In just, it's not in as the, much in any of the directions. And I think to, it took like half an hour to take the videos. Mm -hmm. Look at that. And still in, in counter he will... Uh, the first time we took... Uh, and I'm sorry because I, I, uh, I didn't... Uh, do a good job with the video, so we haven't got that. But then he was, when we tried canter for the first time, he really was bucking and doing a lot of, uh, uh, yeah, funny steps. Yeah. And that is because he's blocked in the back, always. People say, oh, the horse is so happy because he's bucking, but no. When the horse is happy, he will run, but then he, he will stretch his back and, and snort and doing all sort of things like that, but he will not buck and, and throw the rider. And it, there you can see that uh, a, good, a good, good way to train the horse to do a transition from canter to, to trot in the beginning, when, it, when the horse is uh, like prone to lifting his head and, and run, mm -hmm. you just canter and then you give. You give as much as the, that, that the horse loses his back and then he falls down into trot. But then he falls into trot while carrying somewhat yes. with his top line. Yeah. It's a good tip. Just try that. It's Pro tip. Do it because, on an uphill. Because easier. when the horse is cantering, you could see that when she was giving, it became big because then the back came up and it became too too hard, too, mm -hmm. too heavy for the muscles to carry. Right. Important note again. Uh, as we saw in the beginning, stretching the horse all the way down needs to be tested but you don't need to be riding with the nose in the snow or sand all the time every day that isn't what we're trying to do but this needs... is the training yeah all but... what all what we've seen in these videos are from the same training session mm. we started with stretching all the way down tried to take him up stretch him all down again and let him try to this is sort of the aim try to find this this balance so that he doesn't really fall down and it doesn't really carry perfectly but he's trying to expand the the shapes he is able to move freely in mm -hmm. yeah it's the same yeah. as uh, you can see a lot of uh, people when they try to do a squat for instance you can see that they squat down very nicely until they get really deep and then they round their back and drop their butt underneath because they're not flexible enough or mm. strong enough in some particular muscle. It's difficult for him to, to balance properly. He sometimes fans the balance and sometimes the ground gives in in front of him. At he's actually time trying too. to stretch in the counter as well. Yeah. You can see him trying, and then, oh, that, but it's too fast, Mum. I can't do it. But he's actually a type of horse that, that uh, is not bred for canter. He's bred for trotting. Yep. So it, this is a, it's a good job. And there you can see that he was sort of falling down into trot. Bred for trotting and not for canter doesn't mean that the horse can't canter, obviously. No, no, it just no. means that it's optimized for trotting yeah. really fast. Mm -hmm. And now you can see that when he, she's trying to... to Trot after the canter, she still tries to stretch him to find the balance. There you find the balance, mm -hmm. good. And then it's a good transition to, to the walk. Yeah, so she did the same idea that you said you can do from canter to 
trot. Mm -hmm. And then she did that from trot to walk as well. She stretched him out until he broke out of the trot and into the walk. Mm -hmm. right. And it's a good thing that we started with this, this really, uh, the, the half halt that was so obvious because yeah. he was tensing up a bit, yeah. or a lot. Right. But that, that is where you have to start. It, it doesn't mean that she's pulling. No, no. She, because he is the one that tenses up and she's just holding the contact with like one kilo or something like that. Mm -hmm. in, and then letting go. And then he comes to the contact because he's, he's try, starting to trust the hand. Yep. Mm -hmm. Is that it for videos? Mm -hmm. All right. Can we do the photos from the beginning again? So this is how we started. Mm. This is the best training I was able to do with this horse mm. in like the first two or three months or something like that. Mm. On and the forehand, obviously, and that, that, and that sensation of the whole horse imploding down in underneath the saddle yeah. somewhere. And you are very good at, at making the horse sit down on its haunches. And I, if, yeah. I can do that, but mm. then the horse at the... So, so, if I want to do that, if I want to sit the horse down, mm -hmm. I have to engage uh, my legs mm -hmm. and the legs make the horse sort of yep. tuck his butt underneath and lift his back, mm -hmm. but he becomes tense at the same time. Mm -hmm. So this is this here tension relationship to movement. It's extremely difficult to explain and understand at the same time. But we're going to start with this. If you want to lift the maximal amount you can lift, and you're going to do this somehow with your upper body, but it's the legs that are supposed to do the lift, lift because your arms aren't obviously as strong as your legs, then you have to brace the whole upper body and become stiff so that the spine, which is made out of umpteen little pieces, is solid. You can do, you, you think of it like this. If you take little Legos, pick them up off the floor so you don't have to step on them later too, uh, and you make the, the two by two little Legos and you put them on top of each other, a whole bunch of them. That's your spine. And then you put your finger on top, just a little bit of pressure, and you do this. And the whole thing just mm -hmm. falls apart. Right. So you do the same thing again. You pick up all the pieces, sit them on top of each other, and then you take a rubber band. One, round it, round like that, and one other, and another, and another, and another, and then you do this, and it won't fall apart. Mm -hmm. Because those muscles, rubber band muscles, rubber band man, they hold the spine together. Mm -hmm. And that is the job of the musculature in, like, in the these the abs and the, the side here, and even the, in the all the back muscles, they have as at least partly their job to keep the spine rigid if you need to transfer a lot of power through in one motion mm. or quickly in quick succession. Um, so the higher the energy transfer, the higher the tension in those muscles need to be. Mm -hmm. And then as you stretch this out over time, you have to change the relationship between mm. the muscles and then you start to do uh, sort of what we normally think of as coordination. Uh, coordination is, uh, can be intermuscular and intramuscular, so both inside one muscle mm. and between muscles. Mm. Um, quite often when you start training a person, if someone hasn't trained before, you can double their strength in about three months, which is kind of what? And they don't even, the, the, their appearance hardly changes. Maybe, maybe their uh, posture changes a bit, but the muscles, but the don't, muscles yeah. don't grow big and strong in that little time. They can, but normally not in that short a span, time span. And what has happened then is that your brain is now able to coordinate better. So it can tell more muscle fibers to do the right job. Mm -hmm. And this is what we have to do with this horse here, for instance, and what Ida was doing. No, not these. Those won't do the job I am after. These don't carry the rider, no? Not, not well, at no. least. All right. They're they're so, so can you find one of, the, um, one of the winter pictures? And now the whole horse looks 
ever so much more mighty. Mm -hmm. And that is because he's coming up through, through the wither and just in front of me mm. where I sit there. You can see that legs aren't even active. No, so that what you've been doing uh, in between those pictures is that you've been training the horse so that he is able to use his back and, and uh, lift his withers. To get into a good position. Yeah, and then you can use your aids and your riding ability and everything that mm -hmm. you're good at. Mm -hmm. Because now the horse is able to actually listen to those aids. Yeah, so for me the problem is quite often to, to tone down what I say to the horse. Yeah. I can't mm -hmm. tell the horse, be a world champion right now! <laughs> yeah, right. Because uh, this is a joke I use for, for my students sometimes, they're like, when they're like, but I want the horse to do this or that or the other. And we're all like that, I am like that too, so. I want to do this right now! And then I say, okay, so uh, the world record in the deadlift to lift a, a bar with weights off the ground is 501 kilos, right? But if I tell you to go and pull at that 501 kilos, you can do that until the day you die and you will never get it off the ground, mm -hmm. ever. It, it can't be done that like mm -hmm. that. Even old stories have so this the right way. you start with little weights. You start with a young calf and mm -hmm. carry that one. <laughs> yes. And then as the calf <laughs> grows older, yeah, well, that, uh, and then you can carry a whole bull. Yeah. But just maybe. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing with this series about contact is trying to show you how to get to that contact that is with the nose in front of the vertical with the back swinging that it's easy to sit on and the horse is happy and so and so like, when the horse can stretch down mm -hmm. front in front of the vertical sort of or just in front of the vertical mm -hmm. then it can do the same thing in a, a yeah. much higher outline as well yeah that, that's that's yeah. what i find quite often it is it's true. sort of coincides yeah and if the horse can't do that if it, if it cannot do this stretching down with the nose almost to the ground mm -hmm. there is something wrong that is sort of uh, there is a stiffness in the, in the top line or weakness or yeah. something somewhere all right and as we told cool. uh, the last time if you can you can stretch the horse and then you you feel that it's stopping then you feel that that, that is where the problem is so then you have to work with it Dip into the pain. Yep. Try it again. Yep. Mm. So I believe that has shown before and mm. after yeah. and what you do in between. So a lesson or a training session quite often looks more or less like what we showed Ida do here. And it will bring the horse in half a year's time from what we saw in the beginning mm -hmm. till what we saw after half a year's time. Mm. And yeah. of course, in that half a year, we haven't solved every problem. We haven't made the horse into a Grand Prix dressage horse or jumping horse. Not a jumping horse for sure. <laughs> he won't be either. I have sworn I will never jump unless it is the school jumps. <laughs> <laughs> I've almost managed to hold on to that. I jumped off a horse the other day, but that doesn't count. Um, it was a joke. So um, that's uh, more or less what we're going to show today, I believe. Yeah. And uh, uh, there are, of course, many different ways to do this because horses are different. And we are going to try to show next time we'll take another horse that has another problem with uh, getting to the contact. And we'll see what we're doing with that horse. And take simple ways that everybody can do uh, to train to get a horse that is easy to sit on and that is happy. So that is in, in two weeks, Wednesday in, in two weeks. Another horse, right, yeah. cool, yep. So in order to, to get a message when we, we uh, are going to stream, you have to like us on Facebook though. Please do, mm -hmm. that's our own little. And if you have uh, questions or, or ideas to what we, should talk about just let us know please because um, we're happy to answer questions we like that yep mm -hmm. and still will you oh yeah popped out up another mm-hmm like right uh, Karin Boire Letru. Yeah. yeah my horse is stretching very well but he or she does not want to engage his hind
So what you need to do then is, like uh, like Ida showed you, you take up the contact until the ho until you can find a contact, a kilo or half a or whatever in your hand, just a little bit. Don't block your hands, just feel it. And then try to give mm -hmm. maybe this much and see if the horse will come to that and do that again and do that again and see if that happens. If again and again none and again. of those, if none of your um, uh, riding abilities or qualities can help you, then there might be something in your seat that blocks the horse. There might be some other thing in the horse that blocks. But then uh, it's very difficult to remotely tell you if that's the case, right? So then you might have to come closer and ask if you catch my drift. Yeah, and that, it might be that the horse is stiff in his hindquarters in any way. Could be. Uh, but that, but, that but is another, that the, is another stream. That but the main, have. main, main idea or um, thing that you need to think about in this particular session, the point here is if the back doesn't work, the hind end will not work. Mm -hmm. And that is the most important part there. If it is the hindquarters that's the problem, then we will address how to engage hindquarters as well. But that is a completely separate topic, sort of. Uh, and uh, we won't be able to answer that full question, which is a very important and good one, in this particular one. We will come back to show you how to engage hindquarters to the best of my abilities Yes, in because, later streams, for because sure. that is uh, uh, like a tra we're going through the training skills now. Mm. So, like it's, the collection is um, uh, uh, step six. Yep. The last one. Yeah. So but impulsion straightness and in, co in collection are going to come. Yeah. So we are actually going to talk about impulsion in the so quite quite soon mm -hmm. because that is the next step, the new one after contact. Yep. But we saw actually in this video, uh, these videos about Ida, that, that Jandar actually was starting to use his hindquarters more. Yeah. His oh, hind legs. Uh, one thing that, uh, that might be of interest uh, to you, Karin, is uh, remember to look for the little things. Do not expect that even if your horse can stretch all the way, it can all of a sudden just go, I am the champion. Remember to look for the little things. Feel for the little things. Can you feel a little more bounce? Maybe that's the hindquarters coming along. Mm -hmm. So look for the little ones. I, I, this is what I need to do. I have to look for the little things, because if I want everything now, which is what I want always, mm -hmm. then yeah, well, things get difficult pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. So I think that's it for today. Mm -hmm. uh, come back and see uh, hindquarters being activated later. But uh, next episode is another horse uh, uh, reaches for the dust. Now, now the horse reaches for the contact. And for perhaps, the contact, not the dust. And sorry. perhaps we will see some impulsion. Maybe. Because if the contact's there, you can get the right, right impu impulsion. Yep. Because you can't get it without the contact. That is true. Mm. No contact, no impulsion. All right. I think that's it for today. Yep. Thank you guys for watching. Good night. Good night.